Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to All Things Division 3 Soccer with Simple Coach and Jackie. I am Simple Coach. Jackie's out and about, spinning in circles, staring into the corner. Yeah, not a good thing. Anyhow, today is Sunday evening. Um, got a lot of YouTube influencing to do, but first, before I did all that, I wanted to come out with my week one or week two I don't know which one it is the first official simple coach top 25 so on this episode I'm going to run through the men the top 25 men now for those of you who are not experienced in the simple coach methodology and uh, algorithmic approach to my rankings, they are as follows. One, in order to qualify for the top 25, I've had to watch you. I've had to watch you at least for a half. By and large, I watch half of games. I don't watch whole games. Um, and I'll tell you why later <laughs> after this. Um, so I have to watch you. So if I haven't watched you and you're not ranked and you're thinking, hey, I deserve to be or this school deserves to be ranked, it's probably because or it could be that I haven't seen you. But by and large, I try to watch as many games as possible so that I get a good sense of them. Second of them, you, I'll start, the top priority is being effective, right? So regardless of how you play, Right, you you have to be effective, and you have to win, and you have to score goals, and you have to do those things um, in order to to make the rankings. So um, there's that. Yeah, you know, obviously the competition you play is important. But the third thing that's also part of this is there's a lot of it that has to do with the way I like to see games played. Um, some I pass on just soccer wise but i recognize how good they are just because of the competitions they they play and sort of how they you know are able to compete at the highest of levels and there's a number of schools that most people know that I rattle off that just sort of make my eyes roll when i watch them but i recognize how good they are so it's usually just about it is sort of how i do it there is no, I don't care the record so much. Yes, they have to win, but, you know, I, I, I take into account sort of different things, close games, um, quality of the competition, you know, Johns Hopkins is case in point, they're two and two, lost a tough, tough matchup against Kenyon with eight, eight minutes, eight seconds left on the clock. It would have been a tie otherwise. And subsequently fall to Rowan, um, uncharacteristically three one. It's just really intelligent. So I, I, you know, so I take that into account. It's for for Johns Hopkins. Um, so, so now I rambled a little bit. Why don't I just jump into the top twenty five? So I don't hold anybody back. Um, so this one's a new one to, for number twenty five. Um, I've never ranked them before. I'm familiar with them. I watched them this year and find them to be. Good. Um, and I'm wondering if they're back. If you're familiar with Claremont Mud Scripts, currently 2 0 and 1. You know, they had some trouble a couple of years ago. Um, I, don't know, just, I won't go into it. They had some trouble as a team and suspensions and canceling of seasons and stuff like that type trouble. And um, so they've sort of been muted, but they're making their way back. And a 2 0 and 1. They've scored 10 goals and conceded only one. And tomorrow the 9th, they play St. Olaf, which I think will be a good measure. At number 24, another one, another new one for me, never ranked before um, or not ranked in comparison to my preseason poll that I did. Um, so, and that is Covenant College, who's currently 4-0. They may be a team to look at, um, um, you know, kind of like Carlton from Minnesota last last year. Like, just keep an eye on this little dark horse. You know, they took care of Harden Simmons, Brevard, Hampton, Sydney, and Washington and Lee. So, number twenty three. Everyone will know this one. Uh, Ohio Wesleyan at three and one. 
have some really, really good wins before they tripped up against Hope um, yesterday, I believe, uh, losing 2-1. Um, they they do have a very difficult schedule in general, but in a stretch coming up that's really going to test their medal. So it'll be interesting to see where they're at. But I think this team is good. And they're, they're motivated, right, with Jay Martin's – this is his, his swan song. This is his retirement year. So, Okay, he had 24 – Case Western Reserve, two and one. They had a tight loss against. I think it was one nothing against Otterbein to open up the season, and Otterbein is very good. Um, and then they took care of Worcester and Lycoming. I actually think they could run the table uh, until, which would just be a big question mark, until they travel to Denison uh, on the twenty first. At number twenty. One of those teams that I just recognize that they're effective. I'm not a fan of how they play. Sorry, Williams people. Um, Eves, Ebs, Fs, Eves. Um, one and one Williams. Um, they took care of Wheaton. And I, I will say they gave Tufts a run for their money. Um, and I, I think that says a lot. Uh, I think I think the NASCAG teams, you, you, you need to consider how tight they play games. Um, against each other and losses may not reflect much of anything other than um if it's tight well they they just you know can't fate dealt them the short straw right like i I almost think there's a lot of games look like that to me at number 19 this team i think is making waves rowan two one and one they opened with a loss to Salisbury, which I didn't understand. Uh, but then they took care of St. Mary's, which is really, they dismantled St. Mary's. Um, then they traveled to Franklin and Marshall, where they tied, but almost walked away with a win. Um, and then, I think it was today, they just dispatched Johns Hopkins in a very efficient, workmanlike manner. Very intelligent. Let Hopkins do what Hopkins does, and then counter pressed and goals so at 18 i'm liking this one 301 gustavus adolphus they opened with a great win at chicago and then they followed up with a tie at north central but then they beat dubuque and then yesterday or today sunday they beat saint norbert 3-2 i believe in a in a pretty close match it's pretty competitive the I think I watched like 30 minutes of the second half, and it was it was it was pretty tight. Um, number 17, three and O Middlebury they had some solid wins. They can get goals and not concede. I will say with Middlebury, I look to the next couple weeks to determine how serious they are, and they go up because they they go up against Amherst and Wesleyan. So at number 16. And I thought about ranking them much higher because I am a fan of how they play. Very big fan. Everyone knows this. But I'm just going to leave them here for now. At 16, Messiah at 3-0. Dare I say, the games I watched, they figured out how to score and defend um, where they scored nine goals and have only conceded one. And so whatever that gap was from the losses they had from to graduation, they might they might have sorted that out. So we'll be keeping a close eye on them. Here's one, a team I love. I really admire what they do. Calvin, two and two. And I'm not giving up on them. They had two wins and a tough loss. Um, against Ohio Wesleyan. And then I'll say I think they had an anomaly against Ohio Northern, um, but they are still good. So that's my plug for Calvin. At 14, another one, two and two, defending national champions, St. Olaf. They had losses to uh, Mary Harden Baylor in Chicago. But they're winning the games, I think you could say, like you should. You should win those games for the defending national champion, um, and including against a very good North Central team. So um, I, I'm, 
I think they still are a very, very good team and will deserve the national ranking. At 13, Chicago, University of. Two and two. They had two losses. First against St. Olaf that I mentioned, and then Kalamazoo of everybody. I still have questions. I still questions, preguntas, um, questions as to how good they actually are. Can they be consistently good, I think, is what I would say. So, At number 10, tw- excuse me, at number 12, much to my sh- purple raider chagrin, John Carroll University, Coach Dayon. Three and one. They lost to Kenyon in a bit of a heart uh, heartbreaker, and this team looks different to me. I, I can't sense it. I know nothing, right? I don't talk to anybody. Um, but this se- team seems different, and I think they'll be making a name for themselves. Number 11. I mentioned them earlier, Johns Hopkins University, two and two. They started out strong with a great win against Washington. Like, I thought they looked really, really good. And then Swanee. And then they fell to Kenyon at home with like eight seconds left on the clock. And then today they got kind of rocked by Kenyon. I wonder if fatigue and like the disappointment and all these things sort of accumulated to what happened today. But um, I, I, I dropped them down. Um, they're down basically I don't know, close to in my, for my preseason poll. They are da- they are up nine spots, but um, and I'm going to leave them there. I think that's a comfortable spot. We'll see in the next couple games, see how they do. Number 11, these guys, or excuse me, number 10. You know what? Before I start with the top 10, let me just tell you the folks that I dropped that dropped out of this from the preseason poll to this week's poll. Um um, uh, I dropped Suni, Suni Onianta, uh, just, um, results and not too sure. Trinity, Texas, I think they had two ties to start, which were incomprehensible to me. Carlton, uh, who was, I had 21st last, um, in the preseason poll. I dropped Washington. Um, they look like there's a bit of a struggle going on trying to get results, so... A team that dropped hard, um, number eight in the preseason polls, Montclair State. Unimpressive. Although I think the second half against against uh, um, Milwaukee School of Engineering, MSOE, and then today against Chapman, um, I think they looked much, much better in figuring things out. But um, they're, I dropped them still. And then lastly, just one at one and four, and really kind of lost-ish, it looks like to me, is Washington and Lee. So, okay, that was interesting. Why did I do that? Why did I, why did I, but hey, well, let's jump to 10. Number 10, the Blue Golds of Wisconsin, Eau Claire, 90 minutes of hell is back, 2-0-1, they beat Edgewood. They beat a very good McAllister team and tied North Park. And then today they had a thriller against Aurora um, that ended 5-4 um, in their favor. So I think these are guys, guys you got to keep out, keep an eye on. Very direct, very physical, very much they're going to work you to the ground. Um, but they're just tremendously effective. At number nine, Tufts University, 2-0. Had two good wins away, right, to start the season. I, they beat MIT 1-0, and I, I don't know. I just I didn't find them to look impressive. I was impressed with MIT, even though they lost. Um, but I thought they looked much improved against Williams and started to make sense as to what they were trying to accomplish. I do think they're going to have to find goals. Like I, I, I don't want to be a coach. Well, I'm a simple coach, but like, I think they need a transition guy, right? Like 
They have attackers, defenders, and very few – somebody who's just sole preoccupation is creating the transition between the defense and then everybody else so that they can attack. And, and um, yeah, and that's why I think they need goals. I'm sorry I rambled. I should continue. Number eight. Number eight. The Diplomats of Franklin and Marshall at 1-0-3. Um, this team plays against the best of them. They give games to everybody and make it extremely difficult. Um, gone are the days that I used to, I used to, when I first started this, the first year, it was just out of COVID, I think. Yeah, it must have been just out of COVID. No, just before. This is three years. So yeah, just after COVID. And, and I used to call it Neanderthal ball. And They've gotten a, a lot more intent and purposeful with the ball. So, um, so they again one zero and three. You'd think what um, they tied Lynchburg, Rowan, and then today they tied Kenyon one one. So, like I said, they 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 go up against the best of them. Number seven. This is clearly weighted because of how. Impressive, I think they play. Connecticut College one and one had a tough loss against Amherst yesterday at Amherst, which is always the case. Um, uh, and but I do still think they're probably some of the one of the best teams. I'd rank them pretty close up to Messiah when it comes to ball control, um, and they they worked themselves out of some pretty tight spots against Amherst yesterday, and. Um, yeah, so at number six, someone who I'm really thinking these guys look really special, three and one Ohio Northern tough tough loss three two to Kenyon um, to start the season, but then they took down Oberlin Hope and Calvin. So I'm like, these guys are good. They're legit. You watch that game against Kenyon, and you're like, wow, these guys can really can really put it together. Um. I will say their future in the simple coach where they're going to be is going to be tested starting Wednesday where they play against Ohio Wesleyan and then they travel out to um, Colorado, Colorado College to take on Colorado College and UT Dallas in the altitude. So whatever the outcome is of those games, I think they're going to it's going to be interesting. At number 5, 2 and 0. Oh, Amherst, great win against Connecticut um, at home, and they're clearly reloaded. So beware. At number four, the um, I think they're probably uh, maybe is Rowan considered public? I don't think. Okay, so I'll, I'll have to do my homework, my a better homework, more homework. At number four. Uh, Public school who I think has the capacity to win a national championship. Cortland State five and zero. They are undefeatable. They have wins against University of Paywall. For those of you who don't know, is that's University of Rochester and Catholic University. Uh, I would highlight the game against Catholic University. They played a man down for three quarters of the game, and they also beat interstate rivals St. Lawrence University and um, Utica. They have scored two or more goals per game. So they got it. At number three, another one who continues to impress me uh, and seems better than last year, um, Colorado College 4-0. They've combined for 18 goals in their first four wins and have conceded none. They have a big test on on the 13th, which is Friday. I didn't know. Friday the 13th um, against Ohio Northern. So that's going to be that's going to be some game. At number two, um, I, and I think the road trip they did this weekend just solidifies this for me, is Kenyon. Kenyon. 3-0-1. They have one of the most difficult um non-conference season schedules that you can come that you could have and they came out with three victories and then today they tied fnm in lancaster um one one so 
And then lastly, at number one, these guys are looking impressive, I will say. Watched them again today. Um, oh, why is that name slipping? Who were they? They were winning 2 nothing, And that is Mary Washington. Oh, Mary Mount. That's who they were beating 2-1. I think it ended up 3-1, maybe? I can't remember. So Mary Washington, 4-0. They're just rolling. They're undefeatable. They beat... And uh, North Carolina Wesleyan, Rutgers Newark, they beat Bethany, and today they beat Marymount. So, so that's the top 25. I hope you enjoyed it. I will post this on d3soccer.fans so that you can, you can read it if you don't want to watch the video. So, um, with that... Thank you. Be on the lookout for the top 25 women for the first week of competition. And I hope to see you all soon. Later. <laughs>